Today's video is sponsored by Instant Gaming. More on how you can save money on the games you love later in the video. Borderlands and The Binding of Isaac are my two favorite games of all time. So when I found out there was an assault rifle that was a reference to The Binding of Isaac in the pre-sequel, I was pretty excited. Well, that was until I found out that it kinda sucks. But to heck with that. Isaac Online is coming out soon, so what better way to celebrate than with a good old co-op challenge. So today we ask, can you beat Borderlands the pre-sequel as a bunch of crybabies? As for the rules, this is going to be a level 70 Ultimate Vault Hunter mode playthrough. Bar will not be allowed, and we will only be allowed to use the Crybaby Assault Rifle. If you don't know what this gun does, well, uh, it kinda depends. Most unique weapons come with a special barrel that gives its unique properties, but the Crybaby can spawn with two different unique barrels, two unique elemental damage types, and two unique accessories. For a total of eight unique combinations, and that's not even including all the variants when you get a normal element or accessory, each variant shoots a different type of projectile, mimicking different types of tier effects you can get in The Binding of Isaac. To keep it simple, we will only be using the variants with the cool unique parts, minus the default shot barrel because wobbly bullets are more fun. Which leaves us four part combos, and each of us will use a different version. Speaking of each of us, let's meet our band of crybabies. Wait, who the heck are those guys? Our journey begins on Helios Space Station, which is currently under attack by some insane doll military forces. Things were a bit rough at the beginning. We had to get used to the low to the ground POV, our unpredictable action skill getting us killed, and some very unclear mission objectives. Follow the claptrap unit. Uh, which one? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Upon starting our first few fights, the chaotic nature of this run became apparent. Tears flying everywhere on top of the randomness of Claptrap's action skill make it so you can't really plan for anything. Since I'm pretty sure 80% of all Claptrap players are the people you see playing with me right now, I'll tell you guys about Claptrap's action skill, VaultHunter.exe. This ability causes your character to analyze the battlefield and chooses one of 15 unique action packages based on your surroundings. Which is just a fancy way of saying it's f***ing random. A good chunk of his action skills also affect all the other players. Some combos can be extremely strong, while others can be quite unfortunate, and I'll be tier listing them as we go. Also, there's your first Isaac joke. First among B tier is Blightbot, which causes Claptrap to throw out a siren style minion that flies around and burns and corrodes enemies. Which sounds and looks pretty cool, but the damage isn't that great. This still could be a blessing compared to some of the other ones we'll get to later. Anyway, after saving Jack, Tom almost cut the challenge short by killing Zarpadon during her intro cutscene using the pirate ship action skill. More on that one later. After that, we pushed through the moon base until we met our first boss, Flame Knuckle. We all activated our action skills and the true chaos began. I rolled Gun Wizard, which doubles the fire rate, reload speed, and mag size of everybody's guns. It also completely refills our ammo reserves, so we never really ran out of ammo because of it. Alone, this skill is an A tier, but when combined with others, it's probably the strongest skill out of the bunch, so it rightfully lands itself in S tier. Anyway, as you can see, this is a joke because you can't actually see anything. Our guns aren't necessarily melting the bad guys, so we had to work together and make sure we were reviving our homies through the fight. Ten minutes later, we busted his power suit and bullied Flame Knuckle into a corner, where we used our tears to put his flame out. Moments away from escaping Helio Station and our quotation mark escape bod quotation mark, Lucas ruined the One Life Challenge by getting crushed by its door, so that's cool. After all that, we made it to the moon and met Janie, who was gonna help us get to Concordia. She told us the key to getting there was in Deadlift's hands, and the path to his hideout was filled with giant tanky kragans. But that's nothing pirate ship mode couldn't handle. This action skill would be joining Gun Wizard up in S tier, based on its awesomeness alone. The cannons deal great damage, and the way the shots sync up to the beat of the 1812 Overture playing is truly awesome. Well, usually. I had to turn the music off for copyright reasons or whatever, because people hate fun, I guess, but oh well. After fighting through some goons, we made it to Deadlift and started our second boss fight. This boss fight was definitely harder than the last. Deadlift was a lot more tanky than Flame Knuckle. On top of that, he would bounce around on his beloved jump pads and electrocute the floors. We had to make sure we were reviving each other here, because second wins were tough even with our extended five-year lifetimer from Best Buds for Life. But reviving each other also wasn't much of a hindrance, as you would think. The kick him while he's down skill made it so that the bad guys would just focus on shooting the down player instead of the one that's trying to revive them. 
Best Buds for Life gave us health regen and damage reduction for reviving our homies, and reviving was the perfect time to activate high fives, guys, which lets you high five your friends to gain some increased gun damage, fire rate, and health regen for a short time. Not to mention oxygen revives are a thing in this game. At the cost of oxygen, you can revive your teammates twice as fast, and Claptrap doesn't breathe, so it was just free. Not sure why oxygen helps get another Claptrap up, but we can literally turn into pirate ships, so I don't know if logic matters that much. Anyway, we eventually murked Deadlift and all started dancing on his corpse. Bye bye, Nene. Oh. 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 Good night -night. During our escape from Deadlift's base, I rolled Rubber Ducky, which causes all players to bounce around and reflect bullets. This skill makes it hard to aim or revive your homies, so it should realistically go in D tier. But the fact that it allows you to abuse slam knockbacks better and makes putting the stinky on bad guys easier bumps it up to C tier for me. We managed to get the Moonzumi station working with Deadlift's key and had a little too much fun with our new cars. The car, not the tow. Hey, hey! Why are you parked there? <laughs> <laughs> that jump's hard, Tom, by the way. Don't f it I up. Know. Oh, oh, no! <laughs> okay, um. Rig to give me my money. What? How are you? Wait. <laughs> oh, oh no! Oh no! <laughs> anyway, we made it to Concordia, got arrested by a cop baby, gave him the crystal ball to bail ourselves out, met Nurse Nina, met Moxie, found another Isaac reference, had a few drinks with the boys, watched Lucas ruin the one life again, flew around the town, and found out that Crisis Scar was our next destination. Redbelly was controlling the jamming signal blocking us from Helios, so we had to take him out. Scavtrap met us at the gate and told us we had to join Redbelly's gang if we wanted to get past, and our initiation consisted of just wiping out the entirety of their rival gang, the Darksiders. So we high-fived for the big fight, and I immediately rolled Clap in the Box, our first F-tier skill. There are so many things wrong with this skill. You can't shoot while it's active, you can't revive your homies while it's active, the explosion can hurt your homies, the damage isn't worth it, and that's comparing it to the crybaby of all things. You can sometimes melee during it, but it doesn't always work, and finally, if you don't hit an enemy, you get downed. This skill is more hassle than help. Anyway, after that first fumble, we actually got some good combos for some maximum chaos, and Scavtrap was pleased with our work, so we got the password to get into Red Belly's base. Okay, wait guys, guys. Let's prank these guys. Prank them. Let's all throw a stock grenade at them. You ready? Hit at these people right here, okay? Funny prank. All right. Ready? Okay. Set. Go. Oh. oh. Oh my god! <laughs> this is where the difficulty of the challenge kicked up a notch by introducing these big guys. These guys are extremely tanky and required all four of us to focus on them in order to take them down. Tom and I both had triple shot crybabies, meaning we would have to get pretty close for all our shots to hit, and I was struggling pretty hard. But we had each other's backs, and that's what got us through this. After bringing a pirate ship to a playground fight and fighting another three of those ultimate mugger guys, we made it to the Red Belly boss fight. This fight pretty much went as expected, and by that I mean I couldn't see a thing. If this game didn't have health bars overlaid when you're looking at bad guys, they could have just snuck out of the brawl like some kind of old timey cartoon gag and we wouldn't have known a thing. The amount of action skills we were able to pop out was insane. Our class mods gave us each 49% action skill cooldown rate, and Claptrap's through thick and thin skill gave us another 25 that could be transferred to your teammates when your action skill is active. This pretty much allowed us to have some kind of crazy going on at all times. Red Belly eventually split up and we focused on Belly first. After he died, the smaller flying guy got all angry and started glowing red. I feel like they stole that from somewhere. And we eventually threw enough tears down range to finish this fight. And the dude dropped the perfect fucking shred of fire. Which reminds me, if you want this save file with all the cool loot we found, or to try this challenge for yourself with some buddies, I'll have it on my Discord server. Link in the description. After we took out the jamming signal, Jack was able to escape Helios. And now we just needed a plan to take it back. Jack decided to meet with the Marif of Concordia to make a plan to do exactly that. So while the grown-ups are talking, I'll tell you about today's sponsor, Instant Gaming. 
Anytime I want to look for a new game to play with friends, I always check Instant Gaming first. Because odds are, they have a deal on what I'm looking for, and the deals that they offer are just hard to beat. One of my favorite things about Instant Gaming is how fast you can get your games. Once your account is verified, getting your activation code takes less than a minute. Even the console homies can save time and money on Instant Gaming, because they've got deals for PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch games. I'm pretty sure the only time you're ever going to have to wait on Instant Gaming is if you pre-order a game. But even then, if the price ends up dropping even lower than when you made your order, they will refund the difference to you, making getting the best deal even more effortless. So stop waiting for deals! How about this? Think of a game you've been wanting to play for a while now, and just check to see what kind of deal they're offering on it. And if you like what you see and end up making a purchase, just know that on top of saving yourself money, you are also supporting the channel. Anyway, let's see if the grown-ups are all done talking. Whoa, 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 what just happened? Anyway, Jack wanted to take back Helio Station and needed a robot army to do so, because just like in real life, we weren't enough. The first step was getting a combat AI, and Janie knew a guy that could help us out. She also gave us a password to get some new vehicles to help us get to him. The jump to get over this lava lake is like, really dumb. It killed me once and killed Lucas twice. Man, it would be cool to have individual death counters. Anyway, we met Pickle and made our way to the bosun's ship. There were a lot of big bad guys along the way, and we were reviving each other left and right to keep the fight going. But then, Funzerker threw a rock into that plan. Joining A tier, Funzerker causes the player who activated it to dual wield the gun they're holding and makes you fire your guns whether you want to or not. It also glues down the trigger of all your friend's guns too. I mean, I will say it's nice to rest our trigger fingers here and there, but when the action skill is up, we can't sprint or revive each other, making it extremely dangerous. We had some very close calls, but the big guys weren't the most deadly thing we had to deal with. After the clap, you run, okay? Oh, use your boost, use your boost! No, I can't make that, what the heck? <laughs> Why not? Wait, what? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, maybe my freshman year of- Why? You, your moon you, know that, you know that hole in the middle? <laughs> Lucas, did you that fall into hole? the hole? <laughs> yeah. I was gonna tell you to run over it, but you jumped in it on your own? <laughs> Yeah, no, Lucas I died didn't know again. I, was there. I couldn't see. Oh no! We got anyway, we finally made it to the bosun ship, and a few steps or rotations, I guess, through the front door. Physex strikes again. Just turn that off, and uh, there we go. I wonder if that will help with the visual pollution. Back in the bosuns, we started taking out the bad guys and dealing with a lot more of these big guys. Lucky for us, we were getting some good action skill combos, and it was right about here we found the god combo, which is Gun Wizard and Mecro Magician. Joining us here, Mecro Magician does a few things. First off, you throw out Mini Trap, and he seeks out enemies and damages them. All of the familiars you could throw out as Claptrap are kinda eh, much like another game I like to play. But the real magic, no pun intended, comes from the stat boosts you get. While active, you lose a third of your mag size and accuracy, but you do gain a 263% damage increase to your guns. So you can see why this would pair well with Gun Wizard. The cons aren't really that bad either. Our mag size was already big to begin with, and the accuracy never really existed in the first place. Anyway, yeah, when you get that combo going, it's actually possible to see the big guy's health bar move with the naked eye. Why is Alyssa contemplating her sin right now? <laughs> He's like, what does it mean to take a life? <laughs> Stop, guys! <laughs> the bosun was throwing a lot of goons at us, but lucky for us, the skipper, aka the bosun's AI girlfriend, had enough of that nerd and started helping us out instead. Pushing through to the engine room, I found out that you can revive your homies during Funzerk if you spam your weapon swap key, and I also got medbot a few times which kinda helped. We were all pretty tanky with our health bars from Claptrap's All The Things Are Awesome skill giving us a 55% bonus and another 30 from his Pain Simulator's Painful skill, which added an extra 20% damage reduction cherry on top. So if you're wondering why my shield is so small, it's not. Our health bars are just huge. And now that you mention it, I feel like I've seen this blue health bar over the red health bar mechanic before. Anyway, yeah, the healing doesn't seem like a lot, but I guess it's better than nothing. Also, there's a cool glitch where you could drop the laser and re-pick it up to use it infinitely, so I started hoarding them in my inventory because it's funny. Anyway, I'm dropping this in D tier. Even with all of our healing and teamwork, we couldn't keep up, and here we took our first death that wasn't Lucas falling into some kind of pit. This time, he bled out. I don't have Lucas, I don't have Lucas! No! no. no. I died! <laughs> It wasn't just that either. It was so much more sorrow. Oh my goodness, what am I 
Oh, I had one bullet to barrel troll fucking Lucas and I fucked it up. No! No, I stinky myself! <laughs> no, sure! You know what? No. We're not gonna let this stop us. We're not gonna let this bring us down. We will become numb to the sight of Lucas plummeting to his death. We will beat this game. And if you think we're gonna curl up into a ball and cry about it, you're god darn right we are. Lucas, Tom, and I may have died, but our rock, Queen Knight, is still rocking her first life. So let's take the bosun down. Oh, what the heck was going on? Oh, no. no, this is not how we're supposed to start the fight. Alyssa died. Alyssa died. Alyssa died? Underneath the elevator. Yeah. Oh, boy. Torg Fiesta. Yet another liability roll. This one causes everybody to throw one grenade and gives us all free grenades for the duration of its effect. The person who rolled it will also start lobbing out contact grenades at random angles in front of them that can also damage teammates. Mix that with a rickety old cramped elevator and you get what you just watched. Anyway, once we actually made it into the fight, everything got chaotic. Big surprise, I know. Tom and I used our triple shot guns on the bosun himself, while Alyssa and Lucas used their more accurate version on the little shield turrets. Halfway through, I started getting really up close and personal to the bosun, and I ended up using the same strat that Master Chief used on Regret and Halo 2 to deal a bunch of damage. Right at the end of the fight, the stars aligned and we got the god combo while I had the high five boost and finished this fight strong. I will say though, I am very disappointed that I burned the whole Ice King Wizard Eyes joke on the last video because good god look at all this visual clutter. After that, we stole his girlfriend, which was the military AI we came for in the first place, and made our way to the nearest robot factory. Speaking of combat robots, we finally rolled Minion Trap while waiting for the train to show up, which causes Mini Trap to turn into a rocket turret, which sounds pretty cool, but this one's going into B tier because it's kinda eh. The damage isn't that good and you just kinda throw it wherever you're looking, and since you had no idea that you were throwing this thing out, it usually ends up somewhere useless. It's not dangerous like some of the other action skill rolls, but it's just kind of a boring dud. Just like the character it's based off of. Anyway, we found a friendly scientist trapped behind all the scavs and torques, and by sheer coincidence, he was working on a military robot that could create near infinite amounts of other combat robots, which was exactly what we needed, which warranted a little bit of celebration. Are you hitting the gritty? What the f <laughs> We made it into the factory, and I knew this part was going to be a doozy from past playthroughs. So we decided to spend some of the moonstones we found throughout our journey to get some moxtails for the fight. I got the one that boosted fire rate and reload speed for 30 minutes, which gave me just enough time to kill one of these big mugger guys. Too bad there were three of them. Yeah, this trio messed us up bad. One of them had a cryo rocket launcher, and that was making it really hard to revive each other. Cryo? More like, made me cry, yo. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! We were all downed and crawling towards a hopeless kill, and one by one, we all fell. First me, then Lucas, then Queen Knight, and then Lucas again. This defeat her more than all of them so far, but we couldn't stop here. We had to tough it out and keep going. After we finally managed to take that guy out, we started taking steps toward building our constructor. You know, steal some robot eyes, put them in a toaster, find the main body of the constructor, feed Queen Knight to it. My God. Watch as we lose half of our mox tail duration waiting for the turrets to calibrate themselves. Feel embarrassed that they're still doing more damage than us. Have Felicity steal the legs from another robot. Wipe Felicity's memories against her will. Have her get angry about it and try and kill us. And then start crying about it until she dies. Dang, between this and the mare, I kind of feel like we're working for the bad guys here. No, just me? Okay. Anyway, this fight was a little scarier than the rest because Felicity can spawn this repair drone that turns the whole thing into a tug of war. Usually repair drones aren't that scary, but our damage output was relatively poo poo. Like, you know it's bad when Lucas says, Oh, that's good damage, that's good damage. But her health bar only moved down one tick. She also has a shield drone that gives her bullet deflection, causing us to straight up shoot each other at times. The drones themselves are also pretty tanky, so we had to prioritize these things in order to win. You can kinda see why I wanted to do this as a co-op challenge. Imagine trying to get second wins with this gun. In between dealing with the drone waves, Alyssa and I would try to focus on any bots that Felicity spawned so that we could activate the rage element in our gun and deal a little bit more damage. Not really sure how well the rage element was working, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't high on placebo. But just like real life, all your problems can be solved with a little teamwork, high fives, caffeine, and a whole lot of crying. We eventually took her down and did a little bit more celebrating. 
Everybody start hitting the gritty around her. Oh, 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 oh. We now had the robot army we needed to take the moon base back, and there wasn't anything that could stop us. So we all topped off our mox tails and fast traveled up to the moon base to start our assault. Oh, Lucas! Lucas, why'd you die, bro? You killed me too! That would have been fine if you didn't do that. So we got up to Helios, but the weird thing is that, uh, I didn't see any of the robots we spent three missions trying to make, so that was weird. Oh well, maybe we are enough. Just kidding, no, we can't even open a fucking door. We had to find another baby to do it for us. This one was blue, locked in a box, and had a neglectful mother nearby. Come on guys, this one has to be an Isaac reference. Anyway, the scanner that would let us into Jack's office was a bit busted, and I'm not sure if this blue baby was fixing it or making it worse. Oh! Yo! <laughs> Lucas is a cat! Scanned or scammed? Whoa. Whoa. We made it to Jack's office and secured our base of operation. The next job was to go to the R&D section to rescue all the scientists there. Nothing out of the usual here, you know, turning into pirate ships, questioning if my shots are actually hitting even though I'm at point blank range dual wielding assault rifles, watching Lucas lose to gravity and getting rejected by Queen Knight. Just your basic Borderlands meta. Anyway, we saved all the scientists and they disabled the force field blocking us from Helios' giant eye laser. And then Jack airlocked all of them because they were acting a little sus. Oh, come on, dude. Is that my boss again? Hello? Come on, dude. Are you really squeezing in another Among Us joke into this part just like last time? Yeah, what's wrong with that? It's funny and it's relevant to- What? No, what? Relevant? Among Us is a dead f***ing game, and it definitely doesn't help that you're playing the pre-sequel. What do you think you are, some kind of comedic necromancer? Yikes, dude, that's harsh. You know what, you know what, just chill out, okay? I'll change the joke, no need to get hostile. Good. Now get back to work. Jeez, I hate that guy. But he's the boss, so, uh, I guess those guys didn't meet the profit quota. Anyway, we finally made it to the veins of Helios, aka the jump pad parkour section. I really like this part of the game, but I know a lot of people hate it. And, uh, I think I know what side Lucas is gonna be on. Hey there, high five Lucas, oh, behind you! Wait, I'm already high five. Oh. oh. No way! Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Again, Lucas? Lucas what? what are you doing? Lucas, you see those pipes over there? Go stand on him. Let's uh, jump it over here, Lucas. Oh, okay. Are you trying to kill Lucas? What? No, not again! <laughs> we had to fight some of these fighter jet guys, and while it looks super cool to see 200 bullets all flying at the ship at once, they were pretty hard to kill. Hopefully there isn't like a boss version of one of these things later in the game. That would suck. Anyway, we made it to the lunar launching station and started disabling the final force field in our way. I somehow found a Rio-genator in a locker, so that was pretty weird. But anyway, yeah, a little bit of survive until the timer runs out gameplay later, we made it to the Eye of Helios and started our super intense boss fight with Colonel Zarpadon. Honestly, this fight was cursed in so many ways, good and bad. First off, our first roll of action skills gave me pirate ship mode with a double gun wizard boost, which let us melt her shield super quick, and that would have been awesome if she didn't just get the whole thing back right away. All of our rolls after that just kept synergizing poorly. Like one time somebody rolled nonsensical sacrifice, which downs the user but revives everybody else. But none of us were down, so that was just straight up useless. I'm still going to put it in A tier because it did come in clutch a few times during the run. Also, just watch this clip for me. Hey, uh, not me dead. Anyone? Yeah, I got you, Tom. I'm going to get you. Who the f*** just threw a pumpkin at Tom? What did I just watch? So, uh, did you guys see that too? Yeah, when I said pumpkin, I didn't actually think it was legitimately a pumpkin. At first I thought Queen Eye or Lucas just accidentally shot a jackal cannon they found, but from where they were standing and the angle of the pumpkin, that just wasn't possible. But slowing down the footage, we were able to see the real culprit. You see that orange? That is 100% the barrel of a jackal cannon that is in the hands of that basic enemy. I had no idea that these guys could spawn with the unique blue rarity drops in this game, but there he is, causing more chaos, as if this run needed more. 
I didn't even notice this until I started editing this video. Numerous pumpkins flew across my face and into the faces of my homies, and we didn't even know. Anyway, we eventually took down her power suit, and that's where the curse shenanigans started being good. Before this whole second phase, we all hid on this ledge to lure Zarpadon over, and I went out to get her attention to bring her closer. I went down, but Lucas's dying actually kind of came in handy. I'm gonna get a revive by my action skill. Oh, no way! <laughs> I died anyway, but when I got back, Zarpadon was in the prime position. Yes, come on, come on! Uh so if you're ever having trouble with this fight, just know that all you need is a few stock grenades. We finally had the Eye of Helios under control and found out it was actually powered by the Eye of the Destroyer. Or another Isaac reference, I'm not sure. Anyway, Moxie said we could disable it if we overjuice the thing to activate the failsafes, but that was a big lie, and she turned into a giant black hole in an attempt to kill Jack because, plot twist, he's the bad guy. But we still survived somehow, and Jack was so happy that he started throwing it back on us, so that was pretty cool. All that was left to beat the game was to find the vault and secure the alien technology inside. This place was guarded by a bunch of these creepy looking alien dudes, but those guys weren't anything compared to the eternal doll soldier guys. If you don't kill these guys fast enough, they just evolve and get all of their health back, and through conventional methods, there is just no way we would be able to kill these guys fast enough. But lucky for us, this is Borderlands we're talking about. There's always something we can exploit, and in this case, it's the slam attack from our level 1 Ozkit. Using our slam would stagger the eternal guys and prevent their evolution, and as long as we could stunlock them like this, we could take these guys out relatively easily. One of the doll guys we found ended up surrendering, and we gave Lucas the choice in killing him or letting him go. All right, guys, let's see what's in this vault. Whoa, wait, did you guys see that? What the heck is that? Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Oh, no. It's a giant boss version of the jet fighters. No. All right, real talk, guys. This fight was the hardest one yet. I'll give you a breakdown. First off, 90% of the time, this jet was pretty far away from us, making it so we would have to lead our shots far in front of where we thought it would be, which is 10 times harder when your shots have a mind of their own, and they're literally children's tears. It would sometimes get low to the ground with some missile strikes, but that was so rare, it might as well have just not happened. Our action skills were also just not that great. Anything except for Gun Wizard, Mecro Magician, or Fun Zerker were just straight up useless because we couldn't utilize them even if we tried. This wouldn't have been too much of an issue if we actually got those good ones, but all we would get is triple clap in the box rolls or Queen Knight's personal favorite. No! Dude, uh, how many Torque Fiestas was that? Three. No. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god, not fiesta. the Torque Fiesta! Rubber no. Ducky Fiesta! Fiesta! <laughs> oh my god. Fiesta. 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 What the? Okay, okay, Fiesta. 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 I just keep getting to like bomb myself, punch myself in the face, Fiesta. <laughs> I can finish up the tier list here. First off, shh, trap is in C tier. This was the first time I got it during the whole run, and all it does is make you invisible to enemies. Not super useful when the giant airship decides to just nuke the whole arena, but I guess it's pretty nice if you ever want to revive some of your homies. And finally, for the absolute worst action package yet, meat unicycle, which causes you to switch out your gun for a buzz axe and start dealing fire nova damage. You can imagine trying to punch a jet fighter if you want. I'd be a liar if I said I didn't try. But even if I could, the damage from these melee attacks is just so abysmal. You know it's bad when the most optimal strat for meat unicycle is to not even try and just go high five your homies so they can deal some more damage. Easy F tier. A couple of honorable mentions, we could not get One Shot Wonder or Disco Inferno because we weren't using the right skills for them, just in case any of the Claptrap mains say we forgot them. I don't want to make all four of you guys mad. Halfway through this fight, our Moxtail power-ups wore off and Lucas had to go AFK for a bit to get his dinner, so we had to worry about protecting him now too. RK5 added four deaths to the counter by the time he reached his Fate Acceptance phase, where we could just lay into him. And together, we finally took it down. 
Necro Magician, that's it. Let's go. Yikes. Other bosses so far have taken upwards of 10, 15 minutes to finish, but this one? This one took over an hour. Anyway, we jumped into the giant scary alien hole and fought through some more of those tanky guys. We definitely took a wrong turn somewhere because we got super lost, and we were stuck here for a while too. There were a ton of bad guys we had to kill here just to get out, and they were all just absolute tanks. After a good hour of totally optional fighting we didn't have to do, we finally made it to the vault and we were ready for anything. It can't get much worse than these creepy guys. Oh, oh no. What happened? Everybody close your eyes, so unless you want to witness childbirth. Ew. Ew. Oh my god, it got way worse. Jeez, these things just keep getting tankier and tankier. What if we just like... Yeah, 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 there we go, much better. Anyway, we eventually entered the vault and started our last boss fight of the run. Let's do this. Oh god, no, not the bullet deflection on no. Gunzerker. <laughs> okay, rest in- Well, that was a rough start. I really rolled Funzerker right as it entered bullet reflection mode, so that was cool. And everything after that went downhill. For the Sentinel, we started getting so many good action skill combos. We even rolled three pirate ships at the same time, which was just absolutely awesome. We started waiting for each other's action skills to be ready and just kept popping them all at the same time. Doing so let us take down the first four phases and spawned the true final boss. Imagine that, a multi-staged boss fight to finish the game, who would even? This is where us triple shot homies really started to shine. For the first time in the run we could have all three projectiles of our shot hit a bad guy's critical spot at the same time. We got the god combo and managed to finish off the first mask. After that Tom popped a nonsensical sacrifice so we could secure phase two and thus began the final and hardest phase. Claptrap being made of metal means that he takes increased corrosive damage, so when he started vomiting acid and causing big eruptions of it from the floor, we had to play a bit differently. You ever play the floor's acid? It's a lot like the floor's lava, but it's for robots. Reviving teammates in the acid was pretty much impossible, so we either tried to set up a second wind enemy for them, or just catch them midair and fly them to safety. I got you, Tom. I think. <laughs> We had a really close call when we all went down at the same time. If we all had to respawn and left the arena empty, we would have to restart the whole fight. At the very last second, one of those Sarah Guardian things spawned, letting Tom get up and prevent the full reset. And as soon as we went back in, we went guns blazing with a Funzerker wizard combo, and another Mecro wizard combo after that. Lucas came in clutch with another sacrifice, securing a triple revive from it right at the very end. And we finished the fight with pirate ship mode, leaving just enough rounds for some victory shots. Signifying that yes, you can beat Borderlands the pre-sequel as a bunch of crybabies. Bonus content time, woo! So this run was a great balance of fun and challenge, but I felt it could have felt a little more roguelike to keep on the Isaac theme. You know, where death is a lot more than just a number going up. So I decided that we're going to tackle everyone's favorite DLC. Six rounds of wave-by-wave -wave combat where death means you have to sit on the sidelines, capturing that roguelike vibe I'm looking for. That's right, put on your blue light glasses because we're going to the Hollow Dome. Right off the bat, we met a ghost baby. Kinda feel like this one is required at this point. Anyway. Not much to say about round one. This is pretty much just a warm-up. Flame Knuckle made a return, but we threw him into the big hole, so that was cool. Round two was pretty much the same. We had some more of these creepy Ofa things show up, but again, the giant hole made them pretty easy. Lucas got Queen Knight killed. You can clearly see that I'm looking at her, trying to revive her, but Lucas somehow snuck in between us, causing her to fall into a million pieces. On the bright side, we were able to test the individual death counter Tom coded. Thanks, Tom. Other than that, though, the Eternal guys started showing up again, and you guessed it, we used the hole. This round introduced the giant spinning blades of scary death and stuff, but if you know anything about patterns, you would know that we use this to our advantage. This is where things really started to devolve. Most enemies were extremely tanky, and it would just be more optimal to put the stinky on literally any enemy that wasn't a basic mob. Also, Lucas could not follow the bonus objective and fucking died on wave one of six. 
Lucas! What, the heck? <laughs> what did you do, Lucas? It sucked me in. Oh. Good God. We put the stinky on everything. And on our first try, we got way too comfortable. And we all went down against an enemy way too tanky for even all of us to kill. And all died on wave 4. On our next attempt, things got really dicey. Queen Knight and Lucas both took a dive about halfway in, so Tom and I had to lock in and stick to each other like glue. It kind of worked out because Queen Knight and Lucas had the more accurate long-range crybaby rifles, so they could just kind of distract the enemies from afar and use their action skills to juice us up. We fought hard, and it came down to one last enemy. This alien that glitched out. So, uh, if anyone's wondering, yes, you can beat the Hollow Dome Onslaught as a bunch of crybabies. Before you go, I just wanted to say thank you so much for making it this far into the video. If you want to support the channel, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Doing all that helps with the YouTube algorithm, and I love reading all your guys' nice words and ideas for new runs. If you want to support the channel more directly, consider becoming a channel member to get videos a day early, saving some money with instant gaming using my link, or going to gasmaskgang.com to get some merch. I'll leave my Discord and Twitch channel where I stream these runs in the description below. And last but not least, shout out to Mango Soda, who made this video's thumbnail art. They do commissions and will also be linked below. But until next time, breathe easy, homies.